What is up guys? We're back with another Inkscape video. In this video we'll be covering the sound and all that we have to do to get sound in our Inkscape scene, what we can do as far as volume, where we want to hear it, where we don't want to hear it, types of sounds, all of that will be covered in this video. I will say before we get right into it, if you do learn something during the course of this video, if you wouldn't mind, to please demolish that like button. It really does help me. and also tells me that you're, you're learning something. It's, it's helpful for everyone. So jumping right into it now, looking at sound. So honestly, sound in an Inkscape scene, it's great. It's not something I've really needed to use. Um, it's, it's nice because you can add you know, bird sounds, anything. You can make it the seam seem a little more lively, bring it to life. You could also introduce some ambient noise, sound, songs, whatever you want to do. Maybe you have, uh, maybe you're talking through a video walkthrough or something you've set up like beforehand. You can do all of that within Inkscape through the sound options here. So let's go through those now. Looking at the sound dialog boxes here, I've got place sound source, and we've got the option of placing it on a selected face or an active work plane. Either way, doesn't matter. And we also have the option of enabling the sound. And if I click enable sound, I'll have the option of muting the sound. So by default, it is muted, and you have to click enable sound to actually hear the sound. So I'm in a blank scene here. It's just a sample project, and we're going to add some sound. So the, the first thing I need to do is either decide if I'm going to put that on the, a selected face or the active work plane. So maybe I want to put it somewhere specific, so I would put it on a selected face. So instead of having to define a particular face based on the work plane, I can just click any face I want. So how about this face, the floor here? So as soon as I do that, I'm then prompted to then physically place on this plane that I've chosen where the sound will show up. So I'm just going to click there right in the middle. That's fine. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to get a window that pops up and I can then add my audio source. So let's go ahead and add like a, I think a couple default inscapes are rent a restaurant crowd. Okay. So it's as if you're hearing a crowd of people at a restaurant that might be kind of nice to have. So, and then we can see now, as soon as I click this, I'm going to zoom in on it. We can see it looks like a, a little speaker icon and it says Inkscape sound source. It's the type. And if I look down here, I can see I actually have a sound file, like a physical location of the sound file, and I loaded that in. I've got a volume control. I think the default's 90, and you can set it anywhere between 0 and 100. I'll just put it at 50. And then we've got full volume distance and zero volume distance. What are these? So full volume distance is the distance away from the center of this location, the center of this object, that you would still hear the sound at a max volume. So right now that's at a foot. Okay, let's go ahead and leave that at a foot. And then zero volume distance is 20 feet. And what is that? It is the distance away where you start to hear the noise at all. Like it starts to become audible. So at this point, 20 feet away from this sound source is where I would start to hear this crowd noise. And maybe this will work if you have a bunch of different people in your scene, it might make sense to have this. You'd probably want to change some of these values based on the number of people, but regardless, we can still move on with this example. Now once I do that, I, I'm actually going to go into my Inkscape scene and we can look at this. If I look at the type here, there's really nothing to look at except the default elevation. There should be no real reason you need to change this unless you want to raise the sound source. Now I don't want to do that necessarily because a person, like the sound of a person, and a crowd is probably going to be three to five feet in the air. That makes sense, like the source of someone's mouth talking. But maybe you have a bird chirping at the top of the roof or something, you know, things like that. You can change the elevation that way. I think there's also an instance parameter here. Offset from host, great. Put that at three feet, cool, makes sense. Not, not much you can do here. You could also f work with the phasing if for some reason the sound is phased. Again, I don't necessarily feel like that needs to be an option, but it is nonetheless. So let's go into Inkscape now. Go over to my Inkscape scene, and right now it just looks like the basic scene. But I'm going to actually come over here, and we're going to hopefully start to hear this noise. And it looks like we're not, so why are we not hearing the noise? Let's go back to Revit, and I will click off. And once I do that, I'll go to Inkscape. I've got my updates going. Go back here.
So let's go to Enscape. We'll go to my Enscape scene, and I, if you remember, we did place it right over here, over this floor area, but you'll notice there's nothing to see, and it, even if I get over closer to it, there's also nothing, nothing to hear. Now, why is that the case? Well, that's because we have not yet enabled the sound. Again, remember by default, the sound is off, we need to actually enable the sound. So I'll go to hit enable sound. And once we do that, we can start to hear the audible sound of a restaurant crowd. And conveniently enough, we could also see a little speaker icon that shows us where all of our sound sources are in the scene. And no matter how many you have, you can see this as well. So I can move closer. And once I move closer, we can start to hear the sound get closer and at, or get louder and at, up to a certain point. Once I get within a foot, they will be at the max volume. And of course, likewise, once I get beyond 20 feet, I will not be able to hear this at all. And there we go. I can't hear this anymore at all. So that's, it's really nice to be able to see all the sound sources, but maybe you don't necessarily want to see them. Maybe you're at the point where you're ready to present and you don't want to see these sound sources. Well, one way we can get around that is going back into Revit and to, into our general settings and preferences, we can uncheck show sound sources. As soon as we uncheck that, we can see that I can no longer see that sound source icon, but I can still hear my restaurant crowd going. That's perfect. That's probably what we want when it comes to presenting if you're working out of Revit specifically. Something else we can do, and I'm going to go ahead and turn those back on so we can see them. Something else we can do is maybe you want to uh, create like an ambient sound or have a song playing or something like that throughout the entire scene. So how would how would you go about doing that? So going back into Revit, I'm actually going to delete this sound source. I'll unenable the sound for now. And let's go ahead and make another one. I'll place this sound source and I want it somewhere in the center of my scene, which is probably going to be a similar location as before. I'll place that right there. And I've got this essentially a full song. Once I have that loaded in, we can see there it is. I'm going to go ahead and change this zero volume distance to something significantly higher, basically to the point where if I go anywhere throughout my entire scene, I can basically hear the same sound or song at the same volume. So let's go ahead and put like 200 feet because that will more than cover the distance of this scene. So as we move out, move throughout this entire scene, we can still hear this song. So now let's go ahead and enable the sound. And once I do that, we can now start to hear that full song playing. And it's just some ambient sound. And really, you can see as I move throughout this entire scene, I'm still able to hear that song regardless of where I am. And that's kind of the point because we set the volume distance to like 200, something to where I, no matter where I am in this entire scene, I can still see, you know, I can still hear it all. So I'm just to show you that that is the case I'll, I'll zoom out and there will be eventually a point beyond 200 feet where we can no longer hear any of that music and obviously set that to whatever you need to if you want to hear a sound throughout the entire scene this is also good for if you want to create an animation have some background music playing it's a real easy way of implementing that in obviously if you if you have a bird or something up at the top of the roof it's cool to hear that as you pass that in uh, a animation it makes the scene seem a little more real a little more lively you could do something similar to what we've done as far as adding an ambient music or ambient song in some sort of video editing software after you create a video but if it's a live presentation and you want that ambient music this is the way you're gonna have to do it unless you're playing music from some other program in the background which I, that would just kind of be a mess you might as well bake it all into Enscape if you can that will be essentially everything for sound. When it comes to Enscape, it's pretty basic. There's, again, it's not a whole lot to do. It's just a matter of where you place it, whether it's a face or on the active work plane. I like face just because you have access to more faces than you probably would on a typical work plane. After that, it's just enabling the sound, getting the volume right, and deciding whether you want to see those icons as you work, and creating a nice presentation with sound. If you do have questions, leave those in the comment section below. Also, if you did end up learning something, please demolish that like button. It really does help. And also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. Always like to see that. Definitely helps me out a lot. I've got lots of new InScape videos coming out in the very near future. 
if you have a specific topic you'd like to know, also leave that in the comments below. I sure hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.